So as you see, we have a lot of people entering the room. So again, if you don't mind, please go to the middle to let people find some places more easily. Okay, so now we are welcoming Jeff Griffiths. So Jeff is working for Mozilla as a product manager for Firefox developer tools. He is a web and music technology geek. Has his best at his best when solving hard problems or integrating old systems using great open source software. His specialties, they are numerous, JavaScript, HTML5, high-capacity event-driven architectures, and heavy data. So please welcome Jeff. I'm trying to remember where, she got, where that is that she got that from. It was probably like people or Mozillians, yes. something like that. Anyway, I'm Jeff. <laughs> uh, I work on the developer tools team. There's a few other people who work on developer tools in the room. Raise your hands. Cool. Where's Alex? Somewhere. Anyway, um, I'm here to talk about making add-ons uh, for the developer tools. Um, and uh, the history of this is that the Jetpack team uh, was a team that worked on, on Jetpack, which is the, also known as the add-on SDK. And that team is now part of the developer tools organization. And we're very excited about uh, getting web developers to make and extend their own web development tools with developer tools infrastructure. I think it's pretty cool and I'm here to tell you sort of the current state of it. We're going to be working hard this year on making it much nicer. So apologies, uh, I arrived here on Thursday evening from Vancouver, BC, which is nine time zones away, so I'm a little jet lagged. Uh, if you've ever traveled nine time zones, you know that 4 p.m. is the absolute worst time of day to do anything requiring thinking. So. If there's a long, awkward pause, it's just because I'm rebooting. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is the old Inception meme. It's like, oh, so you're making developer tools for add-ons? It's like, no, we're making add-ons for developer tools. Like, and then I tweeted this the other day, and then uh, Mossup was like, no, no, we're making uh, developer tools for add-ons too. And that's actually more like we're making dev tools for creating dev tools add-ons to create add-ons for dev tools with add-ons. Uh, <laughs> Um, and that'll hopefully be a bit more clear uh, by the end of the talk. So the current state is, uh, nope. We've got an experimental DevTools API. Um, it's been around for a while. Uh, it was originally created by Paul Roger and some other members of the team. And Paul hacked on like the first really good DevTools add-on that I saw, which was called JS Term. Has anybody used JS Term or the Firefox terminal? It's like a nice replacement for the console with completion and coffee script support if you're into that. Um, several interesting add-ons. Uh, JS term, of course. Uh, Luca Greco is an Italian contributor in the, in the house and he made a, a really useful tool for the team. And this is where it gets really inception. He made a thing called the RDP monitor which allows you to inspect 
remote debugging protocol packages that the DevTools uses to um, implement <coughs> features. So it's, it's for the DevTools team. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you would use it otherwise. Um, the other uh, big one is, actually I'm going to hit, yeah, there we go. Um, the one that's gotten a little bit of attention lately is, has anybody ever used a framework called Ember.js? Hands, anybody heard of it? It's one of those things that people use to make sites. Um, it's not as popular as Angular, but uh, that's cool. So the guys that made Ember, they made a Chrome extension for Ember.js. They did a really interesting thing where they basically made it as an Ember.js application. And then Luca um, came along and hacked out a Firefox uh, add-on SDK port of it in like, what was it, an afternoon, I think? Something like that. And uh, so we have Ember Inspector for both Firefox and Chrome. I'll explain a bit how that cross-browser extension works. Um, and also, uh, Matteo Ferretti's in the room, I think, right there. And he's been hacking on a, a really cool project called Theme My Site, which allows you to use the dev tools to make modifications to a page and then export it as an add-on. It's a bit experimental, but if you go to, I'll share the, the link to these slides later, and there's a link in here to the GitHub repo for that extension. Um, there's probably more. I, I'm probably forgetting some, but anyway. So the existing tools uh, to get you started, uh, are there some add-on developers in the room? Like created add-ons, and who here is like familiar with like making a, a traditional sort of Zool restartless add-on, like bootstrap.js and just hacking it out old school. Um, so uh, Victor Poroff uh, created this uh, great uh, template, as it's hosted on GitHub, and it's just, it's got all the, um, the bootstrap stuff that you need, and you can just start writing code with it. And uh, it's got a basic toolbox that you can use, and you would just build your add-on uh, from there. Um, but it's got sort of hints to the DevTools part of it to get you going. And you can even use Zool if you want for the UI, the DevTools toolbox part of it. So there's a GitHub repo. And in the add-on SDK, aka Jetpack, we've, uh, you know, those two examples that I mentioned, Ember Inspector and RDP Monitor, um, you can use all the rest of the, the add-on SDK modules as well. And... Uh, the other thing that uh, Luca ended up creating when he was working on the Ember Inspector stuff was uh, a grunt task for creating uh, Firefox add-ons. So the way that the Chrome extension works, well, the, the way that the Ember extension works is that it uh, uses grunt, which is a Node.js based sort of uh, build system, essentially, for pre-processing things and doing this and doing that. But it can be used for running any task. and so. Uh, Luca made a really nice uh, grunt task that will set up the add-on SDK for you and get it running and you don't really have to do anything except run a few commands. Um, and it integrates into the rest of the grunt build system that's used for the Ember Inspector project so that when um, people working on that project need to build add-ons for Firefox or Chrome, they're just running some Node.js commands on the command line. They're not having to worry about one browser or the other that much. So, and uh, it's, it's really like, it's a bit of a complicated project, but the Ember.js extension is a, is a really interesting project to look at that uh, in the way that they've done it. So, um, we've added a lot of stuff in the last year in Firefox uh, developer tools for Firefox developers. Um, and the latest iteration of this, we had a, an out-of-process browser debugger, and recently we've landed support so that you get an entire uh, out-of-process browser toolbox, and this lets you um, basically debug any code that's running in Firefox, including extensions, um, from this separate process, and I'll just gonna pop out here and do a demo of that and see if it hopefully works. And so it's kind of interesting what it does, it actually starts a different uh, instance, and then you get this warning. Well, it asks you for permission, anyway. And then this is what it looks like, and uh, this is what it looks like with the dark theme, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so if I go into the debugger, I just look for main.js. I have... I think... 
demo that I can use. Or do I? So this is just an add-on that uh, has a button. This button. And then when you hit the button, something's supposed to happen. But it doesn't. I don't know why. So I'm just going to fake it and then uh, show you what you would do. So this is the code for that add-on in the browser toolbox. And um, for example, you could just set a breakpoint there, and it would work. And if you hit that code in your, in your add-on, it would stop at that breakpoint, and you could do things like inspect the local scope and normal step debugger. Um, you also have uh, a scratch pad directly hooked up. And the way that the scratch pad works with the debugger is that if you're stuck on a breakpoint, and you're in the current scope, then the scope of that scratch pad and also the console is, is where you're at the debugger. That's the local scope of the debugger. So that can be really useful for if you're trying to figure out a weird bug and it has something to do with the, the local scope of, of the function that you're in, you can just inspect it and run arbitrary code from there. So it's a really quite powerful system. It's a bit heavyweight because it actually loads all the JavaScript in from the browser. So. But that's, that's kind of what we currently have, and it's actually a lot of people like it for add-on development. So so in the future, we want to make this a little bit better. Um, better debugging, simpler debugging packaging, and better APIs. Uh, better debugging, that means that... Uh, well, we actually got like a, an intern last year, and he wrote a, a bunch of infrastructure code that allows us to have what we call an add-on debugger. So it's a bit different than the browser debugger because it only loads the, the code for your specific add-on. You could click on the button in the add-on manager, and you would open a toolbox that's only focused on your code for your add-on. It's a very good experience for... Uh, add-on developers, you don't have to worry about looking at all the JavaScript code that, that's loaded in from for all of the browser. So, um, we're working on a thing called, we kind of call it native jetpacks, um, and the idea is that uh, add-on SDK based add-ons are essentially um, pretty simple, and then what we've done in the past is we've bolted on a lot of extra stuff around it, like an install RDF file and a bootstrap.js file and a bunch of other weird stuff, and sort of created an XPI out of it. But uh, what we're doing instead is we're putting, making some changes to the add-on manager so that it'll just directly load a Jetpack add-on without any of that extra stuff. What that means is that what you ship as a package of an add-on is just a directory a zip file with a package.json in it, and you just zip that up, up that directory, and or Firefox will do it for you. But more importantly, when you're doing your development, you can point it at a folder with a package.json and just hack on the code in that folder and reload it. You don't have to make an extra zip file, go through a build step, or anything like that. So um, I'll admit, it's just a lot more like Chrome, and people seem to like that development, so we're going to do that as well. Yeah, there is feedback on my mic. I'm not going to debug the audio system at this point. It's like a little tiny bit. And yeah. But we don't have a loud squeal. If we did that, I'd... is it driving you nuts? <laughs> OK. I don't really quite know what to do with it at this point. So, um, so there is a proposal for the. Uh,
Oh, get it loaded. Um, this is native Jetpack support. It's linked to you from the slides. If you're really interested, you should dig into this, um, this document that was written by Eric Vold, one of the Jetpack team members. And uh, we do everything on GitHub, even like our, our change proposals. So, um, and you see the, the acronym JEP, that's Jetpack Enhancement Proposal. We, we have this process for making changes to the APIs. Um, so that's pretty cool stuff, and we're really excited about it. And it'll be landing probably in 30. Um, 30 is just starting like next week. So there's lots of time, and most of the work is done. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. Firefox 30, sorry. I've gotten so used to like the uh, uh, sort of like, I don't even think about beta and release anymore. I just think about Nightly and Aurora um, because a lot of web developers use Nightly or Aurora and that's, that's sort of my, my shipping version. And when I just say numbers like that, it, it's usually a Firefox version number. So sorry about that. So. The other thing that we're going to spend like a big chunk of the year putting together is better APIs to make it really simple to make a dev tool extension so you can concentrate it just on their functionality and not have to worry about a lot of the extra stuff. Um, so we're going to use Jetpack style common JS modules and we're going to make sure that simple things are simple. And here are some examples of, of what a panel would look like. Um, uh, as part of, uh, so Arakli Gozalashvili is the, uh, the tech lead for the Jetpack team. He's working on the spec and a working prototype as we speak. Um, so it's pretty simple and you, the, the key part of this is that it's very much like other Jetpack APIs and that the UI that you would put into um, the, the frame that's in the toolbox is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, and all the communication is done via post message. And so in particular, if you look at these uh, callbacks that you would get, say you got a message from your, your frame in, in, the in the DevTools pane, and it comes into your main like add-on code, you would get a callback with uh, you know, that source frame as, a, as an argument. You would get some data from it. You would get the origin of it, so you could properly do cross-message uh, you know, cross-origin post-message stuff. And you would also get a thing called a target. And this is the really important part. When you're creating a dev tool, the, the toolbox opens. And what you're really concerned about is stuff in the page, right? And so you have your UI down there. And you want to do interesting things and, and, and pass messages back to the UI. But it's all about the page that the developer is working on. And so the target is a reference, a, a channel to that page. So in the same spot in your code, instead of, instead of doing some sort of weird round robin post message uh, sort of rodeo, you have everything you need in that callback to, uh, to do what you're going to do. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a demo of Ember Inspector to show you what's possible. Um, and the, th the really interesting thing to, to point out about Ember Inspector is that it was it was made by the Ember.js team. It wasn't made by uh, Firefox add-on hackers. Uh, Luca ported it, but it didn't take them a lot of time. And they made some really smart architecture decisions about this, because they wanted uh, an extension that could be maintained and improved by their community, not necessarily by our community. Um, and so that means that most of the code in it is an Ember.js web app. Um, and I'll show you what, what I mean. So everybody's seen this before, go to do MVC. So this is the Ember extension over here. And uh, so it's got a view tree, it's got routes, and it's got the data that's being stored. And, um, and what you can do is you can just say, you know, I don't know why it's showing up four times, but uh, there it is. I could add something else like uh, log bug. 
And you get four of those too. It's interesting. But all of this, all of this UI in here, below the toolbar, is uh, an HTML app that's been embedded into Firefox in a particular way. And this allows the Ember.js people to continue to improve their tools as a, as a framework community using the technology that they're used to. They don't really have to worry about it being a Firefox <coughs> add-on or a Chrome add-on. It's a, it's a web developer tool maintained by web developers for their web development stuff. And I think that's really important. I think that's really important for the web not to be beholden to browser vendors to catch up to you because um, Ember seems cool and Angular seems cool, but I've been around the web too long enough to, to have seen a lot of cool stuff come along and then get replaced or overridden. Uh, there's these guys at uh, Mozilla that were really big into MooTools and Scriptaculous, and they, they still have like a, a kind of a chip on their shoulder about jQuery. I was like, that was like so long ago, guys. Like, get over it. jQuery won. But, you know, uh, just the other day on Hacker News, there was this, do you really need jQuery? article and it was really good. It was like all these things that jQuery does for you, but you don't really need them anymore. Or maybe you do, because you need IE. So the other cool thing about this is that it, uh, you know, you can turn it off and on. It shows up. These uh, add-ons show up here. And they just look like everything else. I think JS term is broken now, but anyway. And one of the other things that you can do is you can sort of link things. So I think if I click, <coughs> hmm, it's pretty broken. This totally worked like a half hour ago, but jet it's totally jet lagged. My, my laptop is super jet lagged. <laughs> anyway. There's supposed to be like an info pane that shows up here, and I think it's uh, I think it's like a little weirded out maybe by the, the re resolution size or something. But anyway, so that's the demo. So I think that's a really uh, interesting, important uh, thing to look at if you're thinking, well, I have to have this frame favorite web framework that I use, and maybe it uses Closure Script and a bunch of other stuff, and and it's really fancy, and I wish I had a better development environment for it. Well, you can build one of those in Firefox, and, and we're here to help you. So that's totally the point. Um, so thanks for listening for a few minutes about this kind of stuff. I hope you're uh, more interested. We'll, we'll be hanging out today, and uh, we have all tomorrow, maybe in the JavaScript room. I heard there's a JavaScript room. Has anybody been over there? Um, it'll be tomorrow. Will it be here tomorrow? Yes. Some other room, but I bet you that's where I'll end up because I like JavaScript. And uh, sorry, it's in K. In K. Okay, sweet. Because um, JavaScript is nice. So uh, that's the uh, super short URL for these slides, or you can just hit me up for the URL, or I'll tweet it out in a couple minutes as well. Um, I'm Kanukastani on on Twitter, but this is the Firefox Dev Tools. Uh, account that you should really follow um, for all the latest in DevTools goodness. And on IRC, we have, there's two channels. And if you're interested in this stuff and you want to ask questions, if you're interested in how the DevTools themselves work, pound DevTools. And if you're interested more in the add-on side of it, like creating an add-on, uh, then pound Jetpack. So thanks a lot. And if there's any questions, I think we have time. Actually, we have two minutes, so. Hey, uh, I'm wondering if you guys have any plans of supporting um, console.table, which was introduced to WebKit and allows you to um, just yeah. pretty print tabular data. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think there's, a, there's an open bug on it. I don't think it's a super, I think it's blocked by us rewriting how we output the console stuff, which is, kind of ongoing, but it's it's definitely something that we want to do. We want to be consistent and, and be helpful there. So I'm sorry, please, when you're leaving, uh, before the, the end, please do it uh, quietly. 
because sometimes people have some difficulties to, he to hear the questions and the answers during the, this time. Another question? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's just like some boy came to me to tell me it's just people. They are just fed up with the fact that before the end, you have a lot of noise from people. 